Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vice President. And may I simply say all protocol uh, respected. Uh, you've heard for yourselves, uh, fellow countrymen, members of the press and the party members, uh, you have heard for yourselves what the elephant in the room is. It's about the three judges who were suspended the yesterday and matters surrounding the suspension. And I know that I'm an interested party, just like he, uh, the other gentleman is an interested party, should have recused himself. I should also recuse myself from just getting into details mm. so that there's fairness in this whole thing. But as a Zambian as a, and as a patriot, I can tell you that uh, we are now on crossroads as a nation. What we have is a situation where one man wants to control the judiciary, one man wants to control the legislature, parliament, one man controls the executive. We can't have a one man led government in Zambia. We can't. That's why these institutions have been put up to make sure that there are checks and balances and there is fairness. Uh, all I can say as a starting point is that uh, time has come for all Zambians, all of us, the lawyers particularly, the Law Association of Zambia, Mr. Lungisani Zulu, uh, the church, uh, ZCCB, Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia, and the uh, CCZ, and indeed uh, many others. All those under the Oasis Forum who have written to us asking us to reconcile, they've written to me by the way, that we should reconcile with him. But how do we reconcile in this situation? It's very, very difficult to imagine that we can reconcile. But I want to say to the Zambian people that the time has come for you to stand up together and fight the injustice which is being applied to the judiciary. Because when we lose the judiciary, we have lost this nation, we have lost democracy, we have lost everything that we cherish. Yes. And what will remain with will be a dictatorship of one man, that man in there. And he just wakes up one morning, he says, you're going to jail for five years and you're gone. I, I, I know that there are a lot of people who doubted this when we told them that this man is up to no good. There are a lot of people who doubted that this man was up to no good when we started this whole process. But now you can see for yourselves that the matters which were dealt with in 2016 are still being revisited now because he wants justice his way. So similarly, we should ask ourselves what message are we sending to the Zambian people? Stability, hope, and confidence in the system or despair and hopelessness? Clearly, we have to put our hands together as PF, indeed as Zambian nationals, and all those well-meaning friends of ours beyond the borders who helped us in the process of elections and everything that comes along with it. Because what we are seeing now is a complete departure from democratic tenets and the development of a one-man tyranny. We can't sit back and watch. So I'm here principally to ask and appeal earnestly to all of you to question what has happened in the last 24 hours and make sure that we put our hands together. I mentioned Lungisan Zulu because he's president or chairman of the Association of Zambia. These people are the ones who represent us when we have injustice or we feel we need justice. Are they comfortable in this situation? that you are going to go to court knowing fully well that this case will be dealt with in this manner because the president has decreed. Mm. The challenge I'm throwing to them as lawyers is to stand up for justice. Yeah. Lawyers, stand up for justice. Yeah. May the church stand up for justice. Amen. All of us should stand up for justice. Amen. And that's why I like what you said, Chairman Sanga, that this is not about Ed Galungu, it's not about PF. Mm. But I know that there is justice. There will be justice in the end. Yeah, yeah. For Ed Garungu, he will be on the ballot paper in 2020. Yeah. Yeah.
<laughs> whatever these guys will do, because the will of the people is supreme. Yes. And the will of the people is the will of God. Yes. So we should take care of this country by doing the right thing. To the lawyers again, I know that we have a collection of uh, elder uh, lawyers who are called the state council. Uh, I know that there are a lot of them. You know, when they give you that in England, uh, they invite you to the Inaba. The Inaba bestows unto you uh, great honor. And you know they call you uh, QC, King's, King's. Uh, King's Council now, yeah? yeah. yeah. Well, there's a king and you are King's Council. Here in Zambia, the equivalent is State Council. You are called King's Council because you are at liberty to walk to His Majesty the King at any time and say, my Lord, things are not okay in the country. There's injustice here. Please, can we get this thing done properly? Pro bono, you go to see the king without being paid because it's upon you as a member of the inner bar to advise the king to reign properly so that people are happy. Mm. By the same token, the king can call upon you to say, king's council, can you come and visit me and my chambers tomorrow? Then the, 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 the king's council, the SC in Zambia, will give an opinion to the king to say this is how things should go. Mm. So I expect that uh, those who claim or who have been bestowed the great honor of being a state council in Zambia, as long as they are alive, should visit the head of state through laws and just advise him on how to handle democracy. Yes. And advise him how the separation of power works and why it is in essential that he sticks to that. Otherwise, we are doomed. Yes. The church is the same thing. The church is part of the governance system. Wherever the system we have inherited comes from, you will see in Europe, the church leaders uh, go upon the king, the queen, the prime minister, and advise them. So let's take it upon ourselves to be responsible enough and challenge, if challenge is not the right word, guide or counsel the president. I think he needs that yeah. before something drastic happens to all of us. Because when he destroys this country, he's not going to destroy himself. He's going to destroy all of us. Yeah. Mark my word. The ones who lose is not HH, it's all of us. Yeah. And that gentleman will easily flee out of this country. And these policemen around us will be busy trying to separate us from the fights and sometimes beating us, killing us. He will be gone. So let's save him from fleeing this country and let's save ourselves from destroying this country yes. by doing the right thing. Let's tell him that this is wrong and it cannot be allowed to go on. I can't say more because I'm appearing in court two days from now. I don't want to prejudice the judges who will be there because the idea is to put and inflict serious intimidation and fear in them. So when I appear before them, I don't know how they will see me, but I don't want to prejudice the ongoing proceedings for the 2060. But I want to assure you that I'm alive to go outside the judicial system, to use the political tools and means available, and the influence that we have to ensure that we bring the judiciary to its independence, where it will be free and fair, and be able to articulate the definition of justice without intimidation, regardless of who or what the stakes are. It is very, very important that we do that for our sake. I know that people don't like doing things for self what do you selfish motives? Mm -hmm. But let's be selfish a bit for a while as Zambians and protect this country. Yes. Let's allow ourselves to be selfish so that we protect this country. And, and I know that uh, that issue will be dealt with. I've covered it sufficiently. And I'll allow a few questions, one or two, three questions before I go. But I know that uh, the man has uh, missed it. Eh? Because he, Right now, you should have been dealing with the cost of living, yeah. the high cost of living. Mm -hmm. You should have been dealing with the uh, Lord Shady. Mm -hmm. You should have been answering some of the questions I raised that why can't you talk to Mozambique to say, to first and in Malay to and You know, the man is uh, a lacuna. <laughs> <laughs> The man is simply a lacuna. <laughs> and, uh, and I was reading around Latin. Latin lacuna means blank. Yes. Yeah, it just means that. Yeah. So.
So uh, the money is blank. So, so, <laughs> so, I can move to the next question. Uh, the next issue is uh, our affiliation to UCA. Is it? Uh, I can just touch on that briefly and explain that we remain in UCA as PF. We have appointed the nine-man committee to look into our relationship with UCA. And on the 5th of September, they will be reporting the Central Committee. October. October, October, yes, sorry, October. They will be reporting the Central Committee on their findings. The terms of reference include how PF should relate with other political parties yeah. and how we can get a good deal with our friends in these political parties. Of course, the, the viral uh, and the uh, 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 you know, disrespectful remarks and things like that uh, should not bother us very much in PF because we are more mature than those who pedal that kind of uh, uh, thing. Because you see, when you are a leader at the, re the level I am, including uh, where my friend uh, uh, Lacuna is, <laughs> you, you shouldn't bother too much about what people say, insulting you and things like that. It's normal. It comes with the office you occupy. When you're in that high office, they will call you names, they will insult your mother, they will do things and so on, but you should have the big heart to say, no, I'm not going to act on that. So for me in Uka, I consider myself one of the big guys because obviously I'm the, the only former president there and I take it within my stride when I'm called names, I'm insulted by the little girls, or yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> the, 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 the other leaders in there and so on. So I take it that this is the price I have to pay for being in that position and at that level. So don't bother too much when they call me names. Let's bother about the bigger picture, what we will get as a result of working together as the opposition. And I think it doesn't matter when you hear that, no, Uka was said by this one or that one or that one. It doesn't matter. What matters is, uh, are we together? Do we want to achieve this? And are we on the right trajectory? That is what is critical. So without prejudicing what our committee will come with, I want to make it known that we have got all the commitment to see UCA succeed, just as much as we would like to see the opposition come together, including my good friend Dr. Fred Membe, who hasn't done what he, uh, is it your Bruno has done, who hasn't gone the <laughs> other side. <laughs> Right. So since Mr. Fred Mem Dr. Fred Membe is still, on, uh, he's still available, <laughs> we'll be talking to him. And, uh, and, and I think uh, there are many others, including uh, KBF and others. We want to come together and ensure that uh, we wrestle power out of this uh, dictator's hands. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. The President will take three questions. Uh, we have a lady. Okay, so I've got one, introduce yourself and uh, tell us the organization you're coming from and quickly ask your question. Good afternoon, Father of the Nation. Good afternoon, panelists. My name is uh, Mishek Mungeli Nirongo. Um, the first human being on this earth to discover that there's no person who is black or white. It was just a brainwash. Uh, the question that I have for you, sir, is... <laughs> You sound very confident that you're going to be on the ballot in, 20, in 2026. <clears throat> in an event that they rule against your eligibility, what are you going to do? Do you have any plan? Then second, the last question is, <clears throat> in your presentation, you referred to the King's Council uh, in UK, talking about um, in Britain having a monarch. Uh, in short, Britain has got a monarch and it is developed. We have critics who are saying that democracy is very divisive because it, it is always having the opposition and the ruling and as such there's no unity. So the critics are saying you don't need a rocket scientist to tell you that democracy has failed to bring... So, uh, in summary, yes, yes, yes. in summary, Democracy has failed to bring dem 
democracy has failed to bring development in Zambia and Africa as large. So why are you still embracing democracy as a governance system? Thank you. Thank you. We have two other questions, members of the press. Okay, so if there are no other questions, His Excellency the President will answer the question, will stand and sing the national anthem, who all remain sit standing while the President leaves. Um, and you have to clear the way. The President, members of the Central Committee, and MPs will leave. The President will address our supporters and our members that are outside. And I hope those prepared in the band should have done that. So, His Excellency, may you answer that loaded question, and then we sing the national anthem. Right. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mishik. Um, you, you, you see, uh, when you go to a bank to deposit money, it is because you know that your money will be safe, and at an appointed time, when you so wish, you can go and draw it out. And if you've been to the bank, three, four, five times you've always drawn the cash as expected. You don't see why you should go to the bank next time and find that there's no money when there's money in there. Uh, what I'm saying is this. We've been to court four times uh, on the same question. This is the fifth time. We expect the court to give us the same justice which they have in reserve. I, I, I don't see how the courts will change this time and say, you're not eligible now. Because we've been to court four times, and this is the fifth time. So I'm giving an example that you serve with a bank in town, and uh, you have been going there to deposit money, and every so often you pass by, and you go and cash, you withdraw, and you carry on with business. So why should you be going to the bank next time and say, this time, Shasangai is going to appear. I hope, there is, I hope my money is there. I've got confidence in, in the judiciary. That's, right. That's why I'm saying I'm on the ballot paper in 2026. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, uh, there are certain things, even if you're a bank and you're running law on cash, sometimes the bank will tell you, can you wait, Honorable Duvinda, we give us 30 minutes or one hour of organized clearance. They are looking for money to pay you. <laughs> because they promise to pay you the money. It's your money. So justice is reposed in those courts of law. So it simply means that when we go there, we are confident because of precedence. We are confident because the system is intact. Unless they've broken it down now and they've agreed. So the judges have to prove. That's why I didn't want to go there. <laughs> that they are still with the sword. You're asking about uh, democracy as a governance system. It's not for me to say, because Zambia had a one-party state. We were multi-party. We became one-party state. We became multi-party. So if Zambians find that democracy is not working, eh, we will do the needful. But I can't be advocating for that, because the system we have now is democracy. When Dr. Kaunda started with his friends, he had democracy. He had multi-party democracy. Somewhere along the way, either he manipulated or he, people said, let's go single party. They went single party. And after a while, they said, you know, single party is not good. Let's go multi-party. They changed. But yeah, I'm afraid that we can't let this guy manipulate us into dictatorship. I can't let Zambians watch as this guy manipulates us into dictatorship by manipulating the courts in the manner that he's doing and we are watching. No. We should stand up and say, come why are you we should be able to say, you number one, you go one too far. So in short, for now, democracy as a system of governance in Zambia is what we have and we'll protect it. And if we want to better it, we'll discuss and see how we'll better it. But for now also, we're going to fight the dictator who is emerging in State House. Thank you, Your Excellency.